to come before the two committees to brief, to give them opportunity to brief the committees as well as Nigerians on the implementation of the 2017 budget. This is very important. Bear in mind that the budget was passed by the National Assembly in May and was signed into law by the, act, the then acting president on 6 June 2017. So we are now four months into the implementation of the budget. And it is felt that Nigerians need to know how far we have gone, what we hope to achieve, the successes and problems or obstacles militating against the implementation of the budget. This has become more important because um, we have heard from the Minister of Budget Planning that they intend to submit the, the 2018 budget this month. So by implication, welcome to this telecast. they bring this month um, they will expect the budget to be approved maybe before the end of the year. So, <clears throat> taking this part into consideration, we felt that we have to know the fate. A very warm welcome to this telecast coming to you live from the network service of the NTA. My name is Dennis Adigun Lui. We are transmitting from the National Assembly where a joint committee on finance and appropriation has been convened. The Senate had last week, following a point of order raised by leader of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, resolved to have before it the Minister of Finance, Kemi Adeoshun, and the Minister of Budget and National Planning on the state, or for a briefing on the state of the economy and implementation of the 2017 budget. There will be one or two other external issues, but our focus is to tell Nigerians what we have achieved what we hope to achieve before the end of the last part of this budget. I would like to kindly plead with the two ministers to be candid, to be open, to be transparent, to tell us everything, because Nigerians are curious. They want to know everything concerning the budget. Um, with these few remarks, once more I welcome you to this session, and I wish all of us beautiful deliberations. But I would like to call on the Chairman of the Senate Committee on Finance to give his own remarks. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Chairman. I uh, nothing really much to say after those opening remarks than to indicate the fact that um, the seriousness of this session was underscored by the fact that the Senate's first resolution on this matter was for the two ministers to appear at the Senate plenary. I mean, that just underscores how important the Senate considers this. And the fact that um, a later resolution has brought us here, the wisdom in that was that a session like this will more likely be more detailed so the hope is to actually uh, reiterate what the chairman, Senate Committee on Appropriations has said, that we are hoping that we'll be very frank, we'll be quite detailed in terms of the information that we provide at this session, because it will help the joint committees in terms of what recommendations and what report is going to be presented to the Senate at plenary. So once again, I thank you for coming as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before we proceed, I think it is uh, appropriate for members of the two committees to introduce themselves, beginning from the right. Thank you very much, uh, Chair, my co-chairman. My name is Senator Omar Ibrahim Kuripi. as the Vice Chairman of Finance from Canada State. Thank you very much. I am Senator Ibrahim Abdullahi Dambaba, representing Sokoto South Senatorial District, a member of the Appropriation Committee. Thank you. 
Uh, good afternoon, all. My name is Yusuf Aubakar Yusuf, representing Taraba Central. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, Dr. Aliou Sabi Abdullahi, Senator representing Niger North Senatorial District and a member of the Appropriation Committee. Thank you. I am Mohamed Hassan. I represent Yobe South Senatorial District, member Appropriations Committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Ovie Omo Agege, Delta Central Senatorial District, Committee on Appropriations. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, our guests. My name is Senator Abdullah Gumel. I come from Jigawa, Northwest of Jigawa State, a member of Appropriation Committee. Mr. Chairman, distinguished colleagues, honorable ministers, my name is Senator Joshua Chibi Darie from Plato Central, a chair of public procurement, and I'm a member of the Finance Committee. Mr. Chairman, distinguished senators, honorable ministers, my name is Senator Mao Aruko Huabungwa. I represent the entire people of Abdiya North Senatorial District and a member of the Appropriation Committee. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, distinguished colleagues, honorable minister and the team. My name is Senator Ahmed Ogembe. I'm from Kogi Central Senatorial District. I'm a member of the Appropriation Committee. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman, distinguished colleagues, honorable ministers. I am Dr. Yahya Abdullahi, representing KB North Senatorial District. I'm a member of the Finance Committee. Mr. Chairman, sir, my name is uh, Tayo Alashu Adura, representing Ondo Central Senatorial District of Ondo State. I'm a member of the Appropriation Committee. Mr. Chairman, my name is Senator <clears throat> Atai Aidoko Ali. I represent Kogi East, and I'm a member of the Appropriations Committee. Mr. Chairman, distinguished colleagues, honorable ministers, my name is Senator Francis Ali Mikena, representing the good people of Edo North. I'm a member of Appropriation Committee. Senator Albert Bassi, Appropriation. Mr. Chairman, distinguished colleagues, honorable minister of DG Budget, I'm Senator Matthew Urogide, I represent the South Central District, Chairman, Senate Committee of Public Accounts, and a member of the Operation Committee. Thank you. Senator Baroj Ibrahim, Mr. Chairman, uh, I represent Canada North, and um, I am a member of the Senate Committee on Appropriations. Senator Bua, the Vice Chairman of Maybe on the other side. Okay. Uh, the Chairman, uh, Senate Appropriations Committee, Chairman, Senate Finance Committee, distinguished senators, first of all, let me apologize uh, that we came a few minutes late. Uh, is not in our character, and I'm well, very, very sorry about that. Uh, my name is Udoma Udo, Ud Senator Udoma Udo Udoma, uh, the Minister for Budget and National Planning. Uh, the Chairman. Senate Committee on Finance and the Chairman, Senate Committee on Appropriation, distinguished senators. My name is Kemi Adioshan. I'm the Minister of Finance. Thank you. The Chairman, Senate Committees on Appropriation and Finance and members of the two committees. My name is Zainab Shamsuna Ahmed, Minister of State, Minister of Budget and National Planning. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, Chairman of Committees and Distinguished Senators, I'm Senator Ita Enang, Liaison Officer to the President. Amazing. I'm, 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 I'm both sides, sir. <laughs> the Chairman, Senate Committees on Appropriation and Finance, Distinguished Senators, 
I'm Ben Akab with the, the DG Budget Office of the Federation. Thank you very much, uh, distinguished colleagues, honorable ministers. Um, like I say in my opening remarks, the purpose of this uh, session is to give you an opportunity to fully brief the nation on the implementation of the 2017 budget. So at this juncture, I would like to invite the two ministers to talk frankly, fully, in detail on the details of the implementation of the budget, both in terms of revenue and expenditure. Let Nigerians know where we are. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, distinguished uh, Chairman of the Appropriations Committee, distinguished Chairman of the Finance Committee, distinguished uh, Senators. Um, now, the Minister of Finance, uh, because the Minister of Finance handles the Treasury function, so they do the final releases. So the Minister of Finance will go through the releases to date. Uh, but I would like to say a few things. Uh, one, there's something I'd like to clarify. Um, there was a general sense that since January, uh, we have not released much in terms of capital budget. Uh, that is not the case. Uh, between January and June, uh, we, we still had the 2016 budget in operation. And we allowed it to flow unhindered. And in the 2016, uh, under the 2016 appropriation, we released over 1.2 trillion capital, and uh, most of it in the course of this year. It is because of those releases, partly because of those releases, that we are out of recession. So in fact, we did release, there was a lot of activity, a lot of releases from the, because our intention, and the intention was to reflate the economy, and which was why we, uh, as you recall, uh, the proposals that we made and which you uh, supported and accepted was to have at least 30% uh, for capital. Uh, and we, I thank you uh, for that support. And I think it's working together in the way that we have worked together that the economy is moving in the right direction, and I thank you. I would also like uh, to say that part of the reason, and when we discussed with you, if you recall, you had a Senate committee that looked into the whole budget processes. And one of the recommendations of the committee the DG budget participated in that committee, and I was there when the report was presented, was that we should try to go back to a January to December fiscal year. And the reason for that is that when you are reporting, it's a little confusing when we're doing it this way, because the recurrent budget, actually once after June, when the budget, uh, when the act came into, into law, the the, all those releases under the recurrent, they now become part of the 2017. And then it is the capital uh, that we start in, uh, with, with that budget. And we've released over 300 billion and, uh, on capital since then uh, under the 2017. And the uh, Minister of Finance will also speak to that. But because of this, it is that confusion that really wants uh, is, it, it is necessary for us to really go back to the January to December fiscal year. And that is why we have been working on trying to get the 2018 budget to you this month. Uh, we actually intend to have discussions with you, uh, in fact, in the next week or so, so that we can finalize that and uh, take it to the Federal Executive Council so that we can restore uh, ourselves to the January to December, which will make it much easier to report on the performance of uh, budget. And one of the things I would like uh, to appeal to you is on the issue that in implementing 
the 2017 budget. It would be helpful to us if we have clarity in terms of the environment, because then that helps us in terms of implementing the 2017 budget. So I uh, appeal for your support as usual so that we can work together uh, in, in this regard. So having said that, I will now uh, uh, leave it to the Minister of Finance to actually go through and itemize the releases since January, the amounts, and, and so on. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, distinguished Chairman, Finance, Committee on Finance, distinguished Chairman, Committee on Appropriation, distinguished Senators. Um, thank you very much for this opportunity to brief you on uh, where we are on the 2017 budget. As uh, the, my colleague, the Minister of um, Budget and Planning, has outlined, um, the Treasury function now releases um, both capital and recurrent, and I'll take this opportunity first with your permission to give you a small update on where we are on revenue, and then I'll speak to releases. Um, I'm pleased to say that um, compared to the second quarter last year, revenue is improving quite strongly. Um, oil, net oil receipts are up 30.7% year on year, and non-oil is up by 22.55, and we're specifically pleased to start seeing improvements in both companies. Net oil receipts, distinguished. Sorry, shall I slow down? Okay, sorry. I'm so sorry. I think it's the, it's the microphone. Honourable Minister, if, if, it's, if it's possible, yes, sir. in addition to the percentages, let's have the absolute figures. It will also help. Okay. I mean, and we also need to know whether these percentages are in comparison with the 2016 figures. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Whether they are in comparison with the budget figures as passed. It's important that, I mean, we get, you know, all these... Okay, I'm yeah. just speaking at, yeah. at, at high level now. I don't have, I will not give you the performance on budget because, as you know, our revenues are cyclical. But let me speak to the numbers that you have asked. Uh, that percentage you give, is yes. this percentage of the figure in the budget? No. no. Compared to this time last year, that's what I no, said. No, no, no. What do you want? We want to know how much collection you have made uh, in this year's budget. What percentage of collection have you made in relation to the projections or in relation to the figures in the 2017 budget? Okay. You'll get those figures. But okay. let me speak to the figures I have, and I'll give you those other figures. You, because you asked us, because we... Again, wait again, sorry. Members, members are saying, if you have them, if you have something in writing that, copies, that can be circulated, no, we'll, circulate. we'll circulate it. But I just wanted to, you asked us to speak largely on releases, but you, uh, in your brief, you asked me to speak to revenue. So I just wanted to speak at a high level to give you a picture on the revenue, but we'll give you a specific uh, brief, if that's okay. Thank you very much. So, um, as I said... The net oil receipts, compared to this time last year, second quarter last year, if you compare the figures, uh, we're up by 30.7%. So the second quarter actual for 2016 was 349.56, and this second quarter we're at 456.89. So that's up by 30%, which is to be expected because of where we were last year in terms of both oil price and the challenges we had in the, in the Niger Delta. But what's more um, encouraging is the non-oil because, of course, we're coming out from a recessed economy. Um, we're seeing VAT at 243.31 compared to 194.61 last year. We're seeing uh, companies' income tax at 206.38 compared to 171.71 last year. And customs and excise at 139.59 compared to 102.18 last year. So overall, 22.55 growth in non-oil, which I think is very um, encouraging. Now, on the releases, as the Minister of Budget and Planning cl cl uh, correctly identified, we were running, of course, the recurrent budget of um, 2017 from January. So the cumulative releases on personnel cost, 1.5 trillion. We're fully on course in terms of salaries and our, um, uh, our personnel-related obligations. Statutory transfers also on course, 128.8 billion. Uh, our redemption fund for pensions, 
37.6 billion. Overheads, 92.5 billion. Service wide, 223.6. Capital 340.9, and I have, I have um, circulated a schedule of that 340.9. Um, and we, of course, uh, successfully completed the Sukuk last week uh, and raised 100 billion, which is to be released this week. So, as at the end of this week, we'll be at 440.9. Um, Distinguished Senators, we've had, a, a, as the Minister of Budget and Planning said correctly, we've had a very seamless rollover from the 2016 to the 2017 budget. So there was no uh, stoppage in terms of capital spend. Projects simply uh, continued. And indeed, the way in which we allocated the funds, the prioritisation was according to the objectives of the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, but focused on project completion. So we prioritised projects that were nearer to completion, that were critical in the first releases of capital. Um, and, of course, therefore, the priority projects. Now, as we, uh, you asked us to be honest as to what we needed and what our challenges were. Of course, we still need much more of your support. Um, we have a number of um, resolutions that we need to be able to complete our um, international borrowings. Uh, as I say, we've carried on with the uh, domestic and uh, we've successfully launched the first sovereign Sukuk, which is to be released next week to the Ministry of Works. It's earmarked for roads. That's 100 billion that will go this week, I believe, on Thursday. So that's where we are on capital. 440.9 will be the figure as at the end of next week, which is 440.9. Of course, that excludes the capital that's in the statutory transfers because that, is, that figure is released with the capital. So we've kept the capital spend going to ensure that the efforts to reflate the economy are continuous and seamless and there was no interruption in uh, the activity of the ministries, departments and agencies. They continued with their projects. Projects were rolled over into the 2017 budget and we've continued to release funds against them. Thank you. Um, may I just add, yes. may I just add that um, the, if, 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 you, if you recall, uh, the funding of the 2017 budget uh, involved uh, some, in some foreign borrowing. And so um, it's a little urgent that we get those approvals so that we can continue the pace of the, of the, uh, of the releases. Uh, thank you. Minister of State. We will open the floor for questions and comments um, from members. Uh, thank you very much, Chairman. Let me start uh, by saying that we have heard what you have said. My first question is regarding the collection made by Federal Internal Revenue. Because they said they have met their target over and above. They collected over something trillion. What I want from you, have you confirmed that this money actually has been collected and has been launched to account? That is what. Then secondly, the uh, constituency projects we have now, they have not been financed and they are not anywhere to be stated. Can you please? Through light of this release of constituency projects. Um, what else again? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a series of questions, but I will begin with one. Number one, what is the total, the total percentage? of the budget performance in terms of our revenue projection, in terms of percentage, what have we been able to achieve, the totality of our revenue for 2017? Uh, Number two, we have a total budgetary provision for capital projects to the tune of 2.177 trillion. Now you said you decided to uh, make release based on, on quarterly basis. You released so far 
You say your result is based on quarterly basis. Oh, okay, you're now taking it in, in total, right? Now, you intend, you intend to end budget spending by December. And so far, you spent, you've released 411. No, 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 no. yet to. You are yet to completely release 449.9 billion. Now, if you look at that, we are now in the month of uh, October, which remains just about how many months to go. Uh, it's just, it's not up to, it's not up to the total amount you've talked about, it's not up to a quarter. It's not up to a quarter of the budget, of the capital releases, of the capital budget as a whole. And now we just have about uh, uh, two months to go. How do you reconcile this with the intention of the government to continuously stimulate the economy so that the economy will continue to be active in the way that jobs will be provided to our, to, 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 to our citizens and the economy will be vibrant? You are not pushing money into the economy. You are saying that uh, out of two point, uh, a budget of 2.1177, you are going to release, by your estimation, it may not be 500, more than 500 billion. Don't you, don't you think there's a conflict between the intention of the government to always reflect the economy and what you are doing now? And don't you think this will cause big problems for the economy? That's uh, number two question. Uh, no, or the last one. I should ask more than three. Now, what I want to say, these are two questions, but my comment is this. Uh, there's a big problem. We are politicians. And when we go by what we are hearing, things are not going on fine. It has never been worse as this. I have been a player in the political scene, particularly in respect to public expenditure, right from 1999 to date. I was a chairman of the President Committee between 1999 and 2003 of the House of Reps. When uh, the Minister of Budget and National Planning was also the Chairman of Appropriation Committee of the Senate. At that time, a barrel of oil was selling for about $7, and the money that we had, about $9, sorry, and what we had in our, in our, in our, in our foreign reserve then was no more than $9 billion, but yet we were able to implement a budget up to about 80%. Whereas you talked about how we are doing very well in terms of our uh, revenue projection, yet we're having this problem. So I think there's a big problem, and I, this is really injurious to, to, to our party, the APC, because, the, no, I'm, I'm making a comment. I'm making a comment. I've asked my questions. So I think you need to sit up because there's a big problem. We do not want to have problem in our party. We don't have problem in our government. Thank you. I would like to call on my colleagues to, first of all, uh, ask your questions. We have plenty of time. This, this thing can last for the next two hours. We have plenty of time. Yeah, we have plenty of time. So ask, ask your questions first. Later on, we will come back to make your comments. But I think they need to answer. Let me answer. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the questions. I, I think it's important to explain something. In order for us to go back to a January to December fiscal year, this particular year has to be very short. It has to be. So you will not expect 2.1 trillion releases in five months. It's not possible. No, I mean, this was June 12. Yes. So you won't expect it. The, the, what we have told, because we've done the bilaterals with all the MDAs already, what we have told them is that they should roll over. They should roll over at least 50 to 60 percent of all projects. They should be rolled over. It is the only way we can restore it to January to December fiscal year. So the projects are going to be rolled over. So the projects are not going to be lost. They are going to be rolled over. You see, because basically the funding of the budget starts from January to December. So we, the money that is collected now, some of it has been spent on 2016. And so 
basically, when, when you do this, this sort of this thing, the pace of expenditure is still going on. We are spending at a very good pace of expenditure. That is going on. But many of the projects are going to be rolled over. And then I also want to speak about revenues. The revenues are better than last year, but they're still not sufficient to fund the budget. We need to borrow, and we have been borrowing, and that was part of the budget. And some of that borrowing is still has not yet been done because we will need it. So, so as far as, so basically, I don't think that as far as the level of spending is concerned, we can't spend 2.1 trillion in, in, in three or four months. It's not possible because even the procurement processes will not allow that. And the whole economy will probably overheat if you try to do that. The money will not be well utilized. So basically, um, as, as regards revenue, we are in a better place than we were last year. And as regards, uh, then somebody asked about constituency projects. Constituency projects are part of the budget. And therefore, just like all other budgets, they will be, we will, uh, they will be funded, just like all, all other, but they are part of the budget. The only thing is that we've only released a certain amount. Give us some time. There's still time between now and the end of the year. There will be more releases. As money comes in, we release more. It's a little early to begin to judge at the beginning of the whole process. So that is what, that's my appeal to you. But I think the Minister of, of Finance will speak some more about it. Thank you. Complicating yourselves. You see, the cry of Nigeria is that the, the, release, the releases are, too, are, are not coming as they should. You have confirmed to us, to Nigerians, that what we are getting is far more than what we got last year. And also, what you are getting is even beyond the projection in the budget. From, I, but I wanted the minister to say she didn't say it. Now tell us what is. That's why initially I told you, you should give us the percentage of your collection vis a vis the provision in the 2017 budget. What you haven't given us, distinguished um, <clears throat> chairman, distinguished senators, in terms of. The revenues, the specific numbers, okay, as of June, that's the, as you know, the third quarter we produce the comprehensive report on a quarterly basis. The third quarter just ended, um, you know, two days ago. And those, so the numbers I have are as of June, the first two quarters, yes. Um, in terms of um, the um, revenues, the total revenue budget for the year, the federal retained revenues for the budget, was 5.084 trillion naira. On a pro rata basis, or a half year, that would be 2.542 trillion. As of the half year, we have collected 2.305 trillion, constituting 91% of the projected uh, you know, uh, you know, revenues, and the point that was being made is that why that's not 100 percent? That's significantly better than we have done in the not last year and in the recent uh, past in terms of uh, revenue performance vis-à-vis -vis the budget. As as, as you re realize, sir. The the um, the. Is it, is it a minute, Chairman no, Finance. No, no, okay, I just wanted to finish. Uh, no, on that, point, on that no, point. Not on that point. Not on that point. As you will recall, the budget for 2017 was a deficit budget. It had a deficit of 2.3 trillion naira, which is about the same amount of debt provided for. In that, in that budget. So, you know, uh, sorry, it's about the same amount of capital expenditure. And therefore, strictly speaking, the capital expenditure is to be funded 
by, by, by borrowing. And as we speak, therefore, I mean, you know, uh, the non-approval of, and that's the point the ministers have been making, of the borrowing means that 1.07 trillion naira of funding, of funding for the, um, you know, for the uh, capital cannot happen. And with respect to the domestic borrowing, the 2017, and even for the domestic, the borrowing has to be paced. You know, you can't go in and borrow all of that. And yeah, this thing. So over the year, DMO has to pace its, you know, its, its, uh, you know, its, 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 its borrowing. They have a plan to ensure an orderly market, so they don't disrupt the market. So that, that's, um, you know, the point is revenues are up, but then the capital expenditure, capital spending by design, by, you know, design in the budget was largely to be funded by debt. And that we, we all need to then, if we want to accelerate capital spending, we need to accelerate action on the, the borrowings. That's a simple message that is. Well, well, I, 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 think, I think I'll just, I'll just mention two things, um, the DG budget. It's, um, first, I'm, I'm glad that you appreciate that the borrowings have two components. The local borrowings are even higher, about 1.2 trillion or so, right, that are more than the expected foreign borrowings. Now, if you don't have an approval to now go and do foreign borrowing, and you find out that there's a great need to provide funding for capital in order to implement the budget. That window still exists in terms of domestic borrowing. It still does, in spite of the need for DMO, like you said, to want to do whatever, you know, facing of whatever funding. Now, but that's not even the issue. My main concern really has to do with it may, may not be directly related to this because we may not conclude on need. This desire to want to align the budget year to January, December. I don't really know how well thought out it has, the kind of thinking that has gone to it. Because this COP, it is going to throw up quite a number of challenges. Are we not, if we are not careful, almost going to lose an entire budget year? Are we not? I mean, what, what are the gains? What are the laws? What are, and, and it needs to be thought out properly. You've given us an explanation of the implementation of the budget. You have even told us that the recurrent component of the budget, you had even started spending from January, right, to December. And that is why you have a figure that is as huge as it is. You talk about having to carry forward projects into the 2018 budget. Are you looking at the quantity or the volume of that budget? What is going to be carried forward? What is not going to be carried forward? Is there anything, any hard and fast rule about when the budget year starts and when it ends? And if there is none, isn't it good for us to just, as the budget gets signed and is implemented, you take the budget year to make sure it runs for 12 calendar months? And if we must, begin to talk about alignment of the budget year to January, February, December. Can we do it as gradually as possible, especially in a system where we appear to have lost several months? In the last two, three years, a new budget comes into effect way into the year. Are we not hoping that for the first time in 2018, you want to kill all that? It's important that we all, because, I mean, you're making explanations about the fact that you don't expect that in a six months budget, you can do all the expenditure that is required. But that's what the budget is. And I think that beyond this session, we need to go back and really think through it properly. On revenue, that's what we asked the Minister of Finance. 2016 was a recession year. The figures we got on revenues cannot be the basis for looking at the figures for 2017. Rather, it's the figures for 2017 based on the projections of 2017 budget. Those are the things that are going to give us an idea as to if there is a problem with implementing budget or not. I think that those are the issues that we need to come face to face with. 
And I thought that, you know, I need to make this comment before other questions, you know, begin to come from our colleagues. Any comments? Yes, yes, let me. Okay. Okay. Let me please, uh, distinguished chairman, take the question or the suggestion that in the absence of permission to do external borrowing, we should have gone to the domestic markets. And let me explain why that is, whilst a very nice idea, not practical in financial terms. Our borrowing, domestic, our borrowing plan and strategy, which was uh, sent to the National Assembly, was very clear on what we needed to do. The cost of domestic borrowing is extremely high and our interest rates are high. This compounds debt servicing problems. And what we had asked for was that we would refinance more in the international markets and that we would also borrow more in the international markets. Why? Because we get longer tenures and lower interest rates. And that is what is needed to reposition this economy. The repositioning of the economy is going to take some time, so we need long and patient money. So going into the short-term markets of the Treasury bills at 18% to go and fund capital projects will be actually a real disservice because what it will do is compound debt servicing. It will increase interest rates, which will further cause us problems. So what we had asked for in our borrowing plan, you'll recall, was permission to refinance maturing Treasury bills. It would be contradictory of us to then go back into the same market and even issue more Treasury bills. So what we need to do is simply stick to the strategy that we all agreed was necessary, that we needed a medium-term strategy on debt, because in the medium term we recognised we needed to accelerate our borrowings because it will take time for revenue to catch up. There will be a revenue lag. And you've seen the efforts that we're already making on revenue with customs, with tax, with the tax amnesty, the voluntary asset and income declaration scheme. So we expect that eventually revenue will catch up and then our borrowings will begin to go down. So it, it would be wrong of us to take a short-term strategy in that regard. So that's why we didn't uh, uh, accelerate our domestic borrowings. Having said that, as I said, as money comes in, we concluded the Sukuk. Uh, last week, the money will be pushed out this week. As money comes in, we are pushing money out into the capital project. So there is a seamless uh, transition in this regard. But I think what's very important is that we have your buy-in. Uh, was very great, the cooperation we got last year. We need it again this year so that we can complete this turnaround. And then once the revenues come in, uh, we'll be less dependent on borrowings. Thank you. Minister, um, um, don't confuse the nation. You, we didn't ask you to bring us 1.2 uh, trillion for domestic borrowing. You knew very well well before you gave us the budget that the interest rate in the country, the domestic interest rate is very high. Yet you gave us a figure of 1.2, which we approve for you, 1.2 trillion. Knowing that, no, no, all right, no, not in three months. Um, distinguish. Over the one year, we will do the 1.2. But you can't ask us to go and do 1.2 trillion of domestic borrowing in three months. It's not possible. When you are planning the market is not even deep enough. No, to take minister, it. when you are planning the budget, yes. Knowing that the foreign component, foreign loan is cheaper, yes. Why didn't you have a higher figure? The foreign we do. No, 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 we the do. The domestic is 1.2 trillion. Yes, the foreign component is about 1 trillion. No, no, no. Also refinancing. Remember that we're refinancing some of our maturing Naira into external. And the external market now, because of the work we've done and because of the strategies of this government, has become very, very friendly to Nigeria. In fact, every day the, the effective cost of borrowing in the um, um, international markets for Nigeria is going down. So it's a great window of opportunity for us. And that's why we said, OK, we will take out of the Treasury bills that are maturing, we will refinance them. That will also reduce pressure on debt service and release more money for capital. But the $1.2 trillion is over one year, so we can't possibly do it between January and September. Minister, you know that the interest rate is very high in general in Nigeria, and there's been outcry nationwide on the need to reduce the interest rate in Nigeria. And who fixes the interest rate? Is it not Central Bank? Central Bank, that is, who is, and the Central Bank is under Minister of Finance. So, all right, we work together. All right, there you are. Sir. We work together. No, sir. So, Nigeria's law, interest rate is one of you, the highest in the world. Sir, you very, very the high. Law. So, why don't you work towards reducing the interest rate so that, so that you'll be able to grow more? This distinguished senator with the greatest of respect. This Senate, the Senate passed, the National Assembly passed a law that made the Central Bank independent of the Ministry of Finance. And that is right. And the, and the Monetary Policy Committee set the interest rates. They're independent of finance. You work together. Anyway, can I, can I say something? Yes, sorry, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Can I just respond, uh, distinguished Listen Senator? That she said this. I just want to respond to the the fiscal year issue. 
I just want to respond to that. Uh, actually, I'm surprised that it's coming from the Senate because there was a committee that was set up by the Senate. And it is the committee that recommended it. We're only seeking to comply with the Senate. That's what we're doing. Because we believe, but we even agree with it too. But we're seeking to comply. And when I was in, in we were invited to participate, and the DG budget participated in the committee. They presented their report to the Senate President. I was there. I was given the report. And there and then I said, we will seek to comply with the Senate directives on this issue. And so we have been working for, for, to that end. It is true that for the transition year, there will be problems. But there is nothing good, nothing good that you can do where you won't have some issues and problems to deal with. So basically, so basically we accept that in a transition period like this, there will be issues. We accept, but we should bite the bullet and solve the problem once and for all, so that going forward, in, in future, we will not have that issue. So that is why I would like to appeal to you. We need your support to make it work. Thank you. And, and just uh, to, to add to that, to explain the thinking of the committee, there's no, there's no serious economy country in the world that does not have a predictable fiscal period. In Nigeria, government, government's fiscal operations are very significant for the economy. The private sector takes its cue from that. And if they don't even know when the government's fiscal year will start, they don't know when you will have a budget, it affects overall economic activity in the country. So I think that we really agree that it's important that we get back to a predictable you know, fiscal year as the constitution envisaged in order to December and that in this year, the transition year, we deal with whatever transitional challenges that throws up. And then, you know, all commit on both sides to ensure that we don't ever get back to the history of not knowing when the budget, part of what that uh, uh, Senate committee on the budget reforms, you know, uh, 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 you know recommended was the enactment of an organic budget law, which will include a budget calendar that will specify dates binding on all parties involved in this process to ensure that every year we have a budget passed by January of one of the year of, of the subsequent year. Thank you, sirs. We are happy that you people are complying what we what you call Senate director, but I was also a member of that committee. Remember DG? And that, that uh, our recommendation was just a, a recommendation as that now, it has not been passed by the Senate. And yet we are respecting our, our view. That's very good. And we hope you continue to respect and implement our resolutions and our, and our ad advice to the executive. I'm very happy that you say you are respecting our recommendation. That's very good. Because this recommendation of the committee, it is still a recommendation. It's not yet even in the resolution of the Senate. And yet we are respecting it. Very good. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Do one, one question so that this can go around. Do one, one question, sir. Uh, uh, Honourable Minister of Honourable Minister of uh, Budget, I have an observation over a statement that you have made with regards to budget, budget, budgetary implementation. We know that budgets have timelines. The budget of 2016 implies that revenues accruing from January 2016 to December 2016 should be applied to implement that budget of 2016. So also the budget of 2017. There is no overlap between 2016 and 2017 because there is cut-off period, which is December. The Honourable Minister of Finance will agree with me. So I cannot understand 
how it can be possible for you to use revenues that accrued for 2016 financial year to implement 2017 budget. Because that was what you said. Okay. That you said cost problem for the implementation of 2017 budget. I think I disagree with you. But to my question, Honorable Minister, on the basis of 2016 budget, you know there was a projection of 1.818 trillion for the implementation of capital budget. Now, what that target was exceeded because we realized 1.823 trillion for the implementation of capital budget. The capital budget was not fully implemented. In fact, as of December last year, only 49.7% of the capital budget was implemented. That is one. Secondly, no, the question is, why was the budget not implemented? Because I said only 49.7% of the capital budget was implemented. In spite of the fact that the revenues that were expected to be generated from borrowing, the targets were met, both externally and internally. If you, if you don't mind, I think we should limit ourselves to one, one question as, as no, far, no, the, first round. The, the, then we'll, we'll do second round, third yeah, round. Yes, sir. But but this one is, this one is critical, no, sir. Uh, yes, excuse me. Uh, is this this is my main question, sir. Is, is it a green question? We'll do one, one question. No, 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 no. Sir, this is my main question. Uh, Honor Minister, again, there is this issue of operating surpluses. It was agreed last year that the CBN had cumulative operating surpluses between 2010 and 2015 of over 700 billion naira. This figure was defeated by the Central Bank. A reconciliation committee was constituted under your own leadership, and then the Central Bank agreed to a figure of over 600 billion. This money, not even a single naira has been released by the Central Bank. And this money was supposed to be part of the internally generated funds to implement the 2016 budget. This was not done, and nothing has been done to CBN. They are still hold, hanging on to that 600 billion. There are, again, about 27 agencies under the NMPC. Now, these agencies, between them, NIMASA and CBN, they were supposed to generate between 80 to 90 percent of the internally generated revenue. The NMPC actually returned zero. All the agencies. So what is the minister doing to, uh, to ensure that these funds that are still hanging there or these funds that must have been misappropriated by these agencies, what is the minister doing in view of the fact that the issue of uh, 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 the, 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 the issue of impunity is gone. What is the minister doing to ensure that these monies are recovered and paid back into treasury? Thank you. Thank you. But I, before the next question, I still want to believe with my colleagues. If we can ask one one question, so that this thing will go around. Because everybody wants to ask questions. Maybe we'll ask one one. When we finish, then we can do second round. We can do three, we can do as many rounds as you like. But I think let everybody have a chance. Yeah, but number. I'll only give you one one distinguished senator Matthew Origi, the chairman, public accounts. Uh, I just want to give you one chance. Just one question. I need half. Oh, half. Thank yes. you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, distinguished colleagues. Uh, honorable ministers, you know, a lot has been you know, said about you know, capital expenditure. And uh, you came up you know, with this that you are giving to us. And of course, it's all about capital releases for the first quarter of 2017. You know, gradually, our public service you know, is getting all the disincentive 
you know, uh, for them to put in their maximum. This year's budget, nobody can controvert the fact that the recurrent expenditure is bigger than the capital. And that component of it, personnel and overhead, we are still inundated with problems of non payment of personnel. Talk less of the overhead. A lot of the NDAs I want to say, a lot of the NDAs go and see what's happening. Their heads are at home most of the time. They don't go because they say there's no money to run their, to run their agencies. There is no overhead for them to buy the basic things to run the administrative departments and agencies. That's the truth. I mean, it's not here now we we'll mention some of them. We'll be able to put it to you that some of these agencies go and check them, particularly the ministries or agencies that are not too conspicuous. They don't go to work. And you're not doing anything at all. If you ask them now, they'll tell you, oh, overhead, we've only got, got it one month, a year, or two months. How do you expect that these, these agencies that depend on overhead for the day-to-day -day running of their activities? So we'll be talking about capital. Let's come to the current. That is a lot more serious. Workers cannot go to work at the end of the month. You don't pay them. So we want to know, what are you owing workers when it comes to issue of payment personnel? And how many months have you released this year overhead to the MDs? Of course, I want to use this opportunity, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Let them equally furnish us with the details of the releases for personnel and overhead you know, in this period. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. My question is very, very simple, because we have to, to look at the fundamentals of the economy, because we are not attacking the fundamentals of the economy, because you can borrow, you can increase your taxes. It's all. We know that there are so many. You even spoke about it, Honorable Minister of Finance. We are not taxing our luxuries in this country. Why can't we tax? Let's just tax the luxuries. I don't know what you are doing about that. Finally, we have banks in this country. Recently, I read they spend most of their funds, or they, they put most of their funds in treasury bills. They are not lending. They are not participating in growing this economy. And I could remember your assumption in the economic recovery and growth plan the banks will pay a major role. I don't know why, what the minister is doing that is not involving the banks to participate actively in the, uh, uh, in the growth of the economy. I wish the central bank was here, but these are my questions. Thank you. I think you can answer those questions. Uh, thank you very much, uh, distinguished senators. Um, I think I just want to uh, clarify something. Maybe uh, I was misunderstood. The, tw the life of the 2016 budget, the life of the 2016 budget by law that you passed, went on till May. So there was no December cutting off. We did not cut off in December because that is what you provided in the law. So we didn't. But where you have a situation, because the, the law also allows before the budget up to six months, you can spend on the basis of the previous budget. So the previous act, the law allows up to six months. So these are things that we use and respect. So there was no cut off in December. We were following the law. However, however, I do agree and I do concede that where you have, you have a situation where the budget is running and it's until May, till June, it does create some issues, particularly with accounting and all that sorting everything. So that is why we want January to December. Everything will be so clear so that you don't have this confusion. But right now, we are keeping strictly to the law that you passed. That is what we're doing. So I just want to, to clarify that. 
including that, but yes. You, but you no. said, but earlier on you said. Yes, because we are allowed to. The you in court from January to June. Yes, because. Part of uh, 20, 2017 uh, personnel. Yes, because and, uh, we are allowed to spend. Headquarters. We are allowed to spend at the same level as the previous budget for up to six months. And so it only went on to five, six months. By, by June, we had a new budget. So we kept to it. Thank you. Yes. You, you've asked for details, and we will supply um, details of those releases to you. Um, on the issue of um, operating surpluses from um, the agencies, and specifically, I think, from CBN, um, distinguished senators, um, we are as concerned about these issues with the agencies as you are, because we see a lot of revenue leakage occurring from these agencies, and we've taken a number of actions. Uh, the first, of course, was the executive order that was passed to force the agencies to actually submit their budgets to us so that we can forward them to the National Assembly. I'm told that there are 38 agencies at the moment whose budgets are still pending with the National Assembly. Um, the other area where we will need your cooperation with respect, distinguished senators, is to ensure that committees do not take budgets directly from the agencies, because that bypasses the scrutiny of the budget office. It is in the budget office we sit down, we look at their projections of expenditure, and we begin to force them to cut it. But when they come directly to their committees, they bypass us completely, and that information gap allows some agencies to get away with budgets that are actually bloated. Um, His Excellency the Vice President, as Chairman of the Economic Management Team, has actually been summoning the agencies one by one on a Monday to come and explain their spending. And we found that there are a lot of revenue leakages. So I think if we work much more closely with yourselves on that, we'll be able to drive up our um, operating surpluses. On the specifics of the agencies that um, have agreed that they have um, operating surpluses that haven't been remitted, some have already entered into a repayment plan, and some have not. But again, it would be useful, and we're happy to share this information with you to the committees for oversight, to actually ask those agencies to account or to give a, an indication of when they will begin to pay down those operating surpluses. Because what we found in some cases is the cash is not actually there. They're actually going to have to spend some time to repay those operating surpluses that should have um, accrued to the Federation and to the Consolidated Revenue Fund. But there is progress. A number of agencies like JAM, like NIMASA, who have gone from about $5 billion to $25 billion. So we are starting to see some progress in that area, but we do need your support. Firstly, in ensuring that only budgets that are submitted through the presidency are considered by the committees, not allowing agencies to come directly to their committees to lobby for expenses that they actually don't need. Thank you. Sorry, the question was asked about luxury taxes. We've actually put a proposal to uh, already, we're just waiting for signature, to increase excise on cigarettes, on champagne, on beer, on um, uh, first class flights and on luxury, uh, on private jets, which will interest some of you. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think um, when the DG budget was giving us some break, its breakdown, DG budget, when you gave us your breakdown, we, we, need, we need to understand because now that it is clear that without admitting a borrowing plan, we cannot fund capital budgets. So can you give us a breakdown of what you have achieved in both local and uh, foreign aspect of the borrowing for 2017, and how much of these deliverables has been tailored towards the capital expenditure? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <laughs> um, Honourable Minister, um, let me start by saying that I would like to express my disappointment in your statement 
when you said the central bank is independent. You know, I've said this many times that at many, many fora, I've made this point very clear, that this statement that you made is a confirmation to us and Nigerians that there is no synergy between the fiscal and monetary authorities. What raised this? When some of our colleagues were raising issues on the interest rate, you said the central bank is independent and therefore you like don't interfere in whatever policies they present. Let me go back to the main issue now. Um, I've expressed my disappointment, but let me make this point very clear. Now, I will take a scenario. It's just the economy now we'll talk about generally. I'm comparing Nigeria with Brazil. Brazil has experienced the same economic crisis we're faced with. For eight consecutive uh, quarters, uh, Brazil recorded negative growth rates. We five executive, uh, sorry, consecutive quarters. Now Brazil, the inflation rate in Brazil as of today is 2.46. The misery index is 10.2%. Nigeria inflation is 16.01%. Our misery index is 52.62%. Yet, because we recorded a 0.55 growth rate, we came out and told the whole world that we are out of recession. Meanwhile, Brazil is just saying we are crawling out of recession. Thank you. I want your response on this. and distinguished uh, senators, the ministers. I have, uh, Mr. Minister, I have one simple question for you. I, I seem to disagree with you when you say that you are keeping to the law that we made. If you are keeping to the law that the National Assembly made, we should, we should not be here again this evening to discuss the budget. Have you said that? You said they are, going to, uh, they are going to roll over 60% of 2017 budget to 2018 budget, which means that you have already tailored your mind that the, this budget will be, you will spend about 40% of the budget this, this year. Uh, I want you to explain that one to us. Minister, you can answer them. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, distinguished Senator. Um, I'm sorry that you're disappointed, but hopefully when I finish... Um, explaining you can um, withdraw your, your disappointment. My statement that the central bank is independent is a statement of fact and a statement of law. And it is not a reflection of a disconnect between monetary and fiscal. It's rather the legal realities. In an ideal world, if the central bank was under the Ministry of Finance, we would set the interest rate and I would set it at 4%, but that's not the economic reality. We have to grow our economy. We have an independent central bank and an independent monetary committee who look at the, the, the variables and make their decisions independently. And that's brought a lot of confidence into our market. But there has to be synergy, and there is synergy, because there's only one Nigerian economy. But my statement of law and fact, I don't think it should, be, um, should, should, should cause any real concern. But let me address the point you made about Brazil. And it's a very relevant one. Brazil, eight quarters of, of, of negative growth, and now they've come out. But the factors that cause the Brazilian recession are totally different from the factors that cause the Nigerian recession. And so, you know, one size does not fit all. What caused our recession? We're a totally different economy. Brazil is one of the biggest agricultural producers. Brazil has a huge aircraft industry. Brazil has 24 hours power. So to take um, their inflation at 2.46% and ours at 16% and compare the two is actually not comparing like with like. Most of our inflation is structural, and that is where the economic strategy of this government has to be well understood. What do I mean by structural, sirs? What is the reason that it is cheaper for tomato paste to come in from China than to come from Kano to Lagos for sale? It is our infrastructure. It is the cost of transport, it is the cost of middlemen, it is the lack of power, lack of storage. So that by the time they actually produce their goods and bring it to Lagos, people prefer the imported. So that's why this government's strategy of attacking the infrastructural deficit is what will unlock the economy and begin to bring down those costs. That is the structural inflation that we have to address. Without power, 
you cannot be competitive. Without transport, we cannot be competitive. We can wish all we like. And that's why the strategy of this government is very, very critical. It's a medium-term strategy to reposition this economy. We have learned already the lesson of oil. We have oil and everybody has a little bit of money to share, but most of the regions are not productive. With what we're doing now, we are making every state productive, linking the states, trying to put rail, power, roads, and thank you for all the support that you've given. But when you begin to see the impact of some of these major infrastructural projects on productivity, then you will begin to see inflation come down. When you can move tomatoes by rail, instead of by road, and by the time it gets to Lagos, 50% are spoiled. When you can move it in four hours instead of four days, you become productive. And that's what we're trying to achieve. So we will get there. Of course, we'd love to be like Brazil. But Brazil's tax to GDP ratio is not 6%. And Brazil is not dependent on one product. It is a very diversified economy, which is what we're trying to build. So we will get there. Um, but I ask you to be patient and less disappointed with us as we get on, on, on that journey of recovery. Thank you. Uh, 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 thank you, Chairman. Uh, distinguished, distinguished Senators, I just wanted to respond. I just wanted to, I just wanted to respond. Yes. I, I, just, I just wanted to respond. Somebody said we are not keeping to the, to the law. I, I, I don't understand how you could say that. I mean, once a new, for instance, if with your support we are able to put ourselves back and we have a 2018 Appropriations Act which is passed, once it is passed, the 2017 ceases to exist. Once it is passed, I mean, that is the law. Uh, you don't have two running at the same time. Once one is passed, the other one ceases to exist. And the, the, the fact of the matter is that we can maintain the tempo, and we want to maintain the tempo, and I want to assure you that we would like, and that is our plan, working with your support to maintain the tempo. And I think it is your support. I came and presented the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, and you endorsed it, and you have supported it and you, you pass the budget as well. It is working together as we have been working that has seen us where we are. When you are moving down, it is not easy to stop that downward slide, which has started since 2014. So we should know what we have achieved. We were sliding, and we would have continued from re recession to depression, if not for the policies that you endorse and we work together. We stop that slide. It's a major achievement. Now, having stopped that slide, we have started moving up. 0.55% is negligible, but it shows the direction. You have to look at the direction of movement. Our plan is 7% by 2020. With your support, we will make it. So what, but it is a milestone in the sense that we have stopped that slide. We are now moving up. I'd like to appeal to you, let us continue to work together as closely as we have been working together. We are moving in the right direction. The pace will continue. If there are things that we can do better, let us know. We will listen, we will make whatever adjustment is required. But I want to assure you that our direction is sure. The path that we are taking is the best possible path. And that is how come we are moving. We thought, when we did our analysis, I thought we'd be moving out of recession by the third quarter. I did not expect it by the second quarter. So in fact, we have achieved the moving out, but moving out is only the beginning. We have to get the 2018 budget right. We must get it right. And we'd like to work with you to get that right. If we get that right, that trajectory will continue. And so working together, because that stimulates the economy and then gets private sector funding. So I would like to appeal to you, let us continue to work together. We are moving in the right direction. If there are some tweaking here or tweaking here, let us know. We will do so. But I, I, I believe and I thank you for your support. Thank you. Um, uh, Honorable Minister, I really 
On behalf of the National Assembly, I want to thank you very much for repeating what you have said initially. You have said that the National Assembly has been cooperating with the executive to move this country forward. It's very, very important. It's good that Nigerians know that we are cooperating, we are supporting the government to, to move the country forward. That's how it should be. And it's good for Nigerians to know that the National Assembly has never been confrontational. We have, all, we have always been supportive and will continue to be supportive of the executive in order to improve the lives of Nigerians and deliver on the promises made by, particularly by Mr. President, His Excellency uh, President Mahmoud Buhari. Thank you very much, and I think we'll continue the session. So, uh, Honorable Minister of Finance, you didn't tell us, you didn't answer the question on the recurrent expenditure, what you are doing with it. Because you just said you are going to give us the papers later. We need to know what has happened. I, in my presentation, I told you that we've been meeting personnel costs, and I gave the figure. I gave the figure for overheads and uh, other expenses, but you've asked for a breakdown, which I don't have here. So I Not said just I the it. breakdown. The, yes. the issue is that in some of these parastatals and agencies. Oh, you're talking about the salary are, shortfalls. Okay. They are not paying full salary. Okay, let me... And that is generating a lot of problems. Let me, let me, let me, let me speak to that. Let me speak to that. A committee was set up. This issue of salary shortfall was of such concern that the Federal Executive Council asked for a committee to be set up, which I chair, which has the Director Budgets, the Accountant General, the Head of Service, Federal Civil Service Commission and um, Wages and Salaries Commission and they're due to bring that report back to the Federal Executive Council. Uh, that committee is ongoing. Now, some of the issues we, are look, we have identified but they're not necessarily at this stage conclusive as to why agencies are paying part salaries. In some cases, and I'm not saying in all cases, in some cases, agencies went ahead to do recruitment. Those recruitments were never in their budget. So when the money from the bu uh, comes from the budget, they simply prorate what is available. So that's why the president directed that even where he wants to know the approvals, because there's, a, there's approvals that are required before you can recruit. Budget office is supposed to sign off. Wages and salaries are supposed to sign off. In many cases, there was no sign off. So people have been loaded on to the payroll. We've, that's in some cases. In some cases, the budget was short. We're trying to investigate what are the reasons. But we found out that this issue of replacements is a very real factor, whereby, for example, somebody who is on uh, grade level 14 retires, and then you bring in six people at a lower level, and then you now promote somebody to replace the person that retired. All, all in all, you have increased your payroll size. So there are a number of things that we're, trying to, we're looking at, and we will then make recommendations on what needs to be done to address this issue. It seems to be very widespread. We're worried about it, uh, but we need to really dimension it. It's not, a, 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 it's not a function of us not releasing money. We're releasing what is in the budget, but agencies are coming back saying we have additional staff. And in some way, we're asking, where did these staff come from? Between when and when did you recruit them? Who authorized you to recruit them? So I will, uh, as, we, as we finish that work, we will share uh, the findings, but more importantly, the recommendations on what we're going to do to address it. It's an issue that is concerning us greatly, and we are going to get to the root of it. I, I said I would release, I gave the figure, but I said I would release a breakdown, because I, I only have the gross figure. You're asking for a breakdown. Just, just I, let get it right. I'll send it. And uh, equally, Honorable Minister, the debt just, figure. Just like we are listening to you, one would like to know precisely whether what is in the budget is what you are releasing to them and then you are having this shortfall in payment, because that is critical to us. It is not just that you release some money to them, because what we have gotten from them, a couple of them, is that what is in the budget is not what they are getting. No, no. We, got, we are releasing fully what is in the budget. No, because no, let me explain, sir. So 2017 budget started in June, Correct. and that's when we begin to run the 2017 numbers. But remember, until that budget was passed, we were running 2016 numbers. So that's why some agencies will be telling you that what we got was short, because they got 2016. Now, what we need to investigate is why is there been a jump between 16 and 17? Because in some cases, that's where the problem lies. I, I, I don't know if I'm, I'm, I'm clear. 
Yes. It is, sorry, it will help your committee, whatever it is. In 2016, you were releasing a certain figure, and they were paying what they were paying for 2016, which was below what they were supposed to get and pay. 2017, they are still on the same numbers, and of course that shortfall has not been cured. We put in the 2017 budget. We then, when 2017 budget started, we now began to release the 2017 numbers. What the agencies are now saying is that there is a difference. That six months on 16 is lower than what they had in 17. So that's why you're having that problem. But what we are now saying is, why is there such, because it's prevalent, normally it happens. It happens every year in a few agencies, but this year it's so rampant that the president has asked a committee to be put together to really understand what's going on. Usually it does happen. You have one or two agencies who got permission to recruit, so there's a big difference. But this year nearly every agency seems to be having this problem. We have sent our auditors down into some to go and look at what has happened. That's how we identify this issue of, in some cases, recruitment, in some cases, replacement, in some cases, they just, the error, there were errors in what they asked for vis-a-vis -vis what they needed. In some cases, they are paying non-regular allowances and some other allowances which were not budgeted for. So there are a number of reasons. Please allow us to go away and do the committee work and we'll come back with something more scientific as to what the problem really is. You said you have had your... Thank you. You can't come back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, why, why? Mr. Chairman, uh, my question, first of all, before my question, I want to make an observation on the document that is presented. Honorable Minister, for the, for the 2017 budget, the appropriations for SDG in the capital supplementation put together is about $35 billion. In the document you have, you have before us, what you put there for 2017 appropriation for SDG capital is 45 million naira. The first page here and page Roman figure 8 in the budget, capital supplementation. So what is the problem? I mean, this, this disconnect is very... Number 9, Presidency, Office of Senior Special Assistant, SDG. Okay. Okay, because if you look at the budget, it's about 35 billion. This one is not the service where I vote. Okay. The memo is in service where I vote. Okay. That, okay, very good. I that clarification. My question. No, 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 no. This is an observation. This is an observation. My question is, Honorable Minister, Mr. President, two weeks ago in the United Nations, told the world that he is committed to the implementation of the SDGs in a world forum. Now, the funding, you have not released one penny, one kobo to SDG for 2017. How can Mr. President's commitment be translated into action when the only, what, I mean, the only reason he can meet that commitment is by releasing funds to meet the SDG program. So tell us how, why you didn't, why haven't you been able to release any COBO so far to SDG, and how do you see us achieving this President's commitment? That is one. Secondly, no, 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 okay. Finally, no, no, Mr. Chairman, I won't have the opportunity. This is very important. Everybody. This is very, very important, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we just, we want a commitment of the I don't, without prejudice to your reaction to this, we want your commitment to this committee that in your next release, which I am aware might come tomorrow or so, SDG will be, uh, will be accommodated. There will be money released to SDG. We just want your commitment for that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. To answer him, really the concern is not only SDG. There are some very, very serious agencies that really, that we thought should have got some money. Take the amnesty or the Northeast Intervention Fund, or the Refugee Commission, where we have a lot of floods across the country. We are not funding them. So, Honorable Minister, I think this time, this time around, you should take all these agencies into consideration. These four I mentioned, and others that really touch the people directly.
Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, listening to the two ministers, it's very, very clear to me that uh, uh, there is uh, the releases so far made is predicated on uh, the budget aspiration to commence from January to December. Mm -hmm. And as a consequence of that, based on your own uh, testimony so far, you've indicated to us that you're taking, you are trying to prioritize the projects that are near completion for purpose of determining those will be rolled over for the 2018 uh, uh, budget. Now, to me, uh, I, I want some clarity. Does this not constitute some form of selective implementation of the budget? Take into account that the budget is law. Does this not amount to rewriting the budget, having made the determination that this budget will the, the life of this budget will terminate in December? And if that is the case, I am very, very worried uh, about specific projects. It's not just the ones that have been named, those the agencies that have been named alone. I'm also interested, like the zonal intervention projects, for instance. I don't know how you're going to be rolling them over because the bulk of them are going to be new projects anyway. And you've already stated clearly that you're only interested in making releases for projects already near completion. I need some form of clarity on that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think I'll be a little bit uh, different from my colleagues. The questions that have been asked are very apt. Uh, I also want to uh, commend the team. I won't, please let me talk. You talk for five minutes. And I was talking for one minute and you are interrupting me. I would like to commend, you know, the, the team that has come uh, on what they have done so far you know, to take us out of the slide that we are going through. But I will say that, I also wish to state that the, you, you, you seem to have a fixation that whatever you have done cannot be wrong. Because I, I could remember that uh, I told uh, the chairman when we were preparing this budget that there was an error in one of the parastatals under my supervision that migrated from the normal civil, servant, uh, civil service payroll to the petroleum uh, resources payroll. And there was a shortage of about 167 million on personnel. Ever since that time, they have been going up and going back, and all they hear is that whatever you have done is sacrosanct. I don't think that should be so. If there are reasons to do things, not based on recruitment or something like you have said. There is a genuine reason for an error that has been made. I think you should be able to look at that quickly as against the global one that you are looking at. The only question I have is how much oil have we been able to produce from month to month to get to the budget that you have mentioned because what we have budgeted for is 2.2 billion and I know that you don't earn as much as that and you should have put that to us yeah, so that we, everybody will know, you know, the reason why some shortages have been made. Thank you. Uh, you see, Senator Gumel. Oh, why do you like this? Yeah. Uh, chairman, uh, uh, I wanted to start to the one question. Uh, Minister of Budget and Planning. Minister of Budget and Planning is a distinguished senator for eight years. So he is eminently qualified as a politician. We are going into an election next year. Uh, and uh, you choose not advise the government that your migration from to your migration to January to December should be in an election year. September. 
So, people view it like uh, the government of President Buhari is being sabotaged. Because uh, next year, like you know, it's an election year. The, the voting is only in, 19, in 2019, is only voting. Everything is going to be done in, in, in 2018. And uh, the government of APC, uh, 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 run by President Buhari, has will got nothing to show to the people for that government to be elected again. So, so <laughs> really, uh, uh, really, distinguished uh, senator, uh, I think you have to look at that uh, migration. I think we should uh, graduate. Like uh, the chairman of, uh, of of committee on finance has said, you don't you don't do it in one day. You have it has to be gradual. So we shouldn't just wake up one day and migrate. After all, it's a committee report. It, the Senate didn't approve it. Thank you. Senator. Senator. Uh, thank, you, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. My own question is a very short one. You know, like uh, my colleague said, we have to understand the fundamentals of the economy. This is an economy that has a very narrow revenue base. It's an economy uh, with a very low tax to GDP ratio and also a very low uh, budget to GDP ratio. Now, in this kind of situation, the amount of spending that you do in the budget, as good as it is, I'm one of the first people to commend you, you know, 2015, 2016, for the amount of resources that you have been able through capital budget to pump into the economy. But what we are saying is that that itself is not enough. You know, because what you need to do is to move people from the invisible, to move the economy out of invisibility, so that it can be visible enough for your tax authorities to tax. And there is no way you can be able to do it without increasing uh, investment in the real sector of the economy. Government expenditure by itself can never get you out of recession or build up your capacity to generate growth up to 7% or beyond. Now, in this kind of situation, you are averging to talking with the Central Bank of Nigeria. You know, despite all the laws, I don't think it's the right direction to go. You people, the fiscal side and the monetary side, you have to come and talk. You have to come and talk because I know that, you know, this whole question of uh, market fundamental, let everybody be determined by the market. Market itself is based on rules. Without rules, there will be no free market. And I know several economies in the world where it's not the market that sets interest rates. It's governments that set interest rates, including capitalist economies like Australia and others. Therefore, the earlier you people come and let us not get even these things that you are doing, it's based on debt. You are just building on debt and debt and debt and debt. Of course, you can be able to build certain infrastructure, but you cannot be able to take the economy really out of the wood simply on the basis of the capital spending that you are doing. Therefore, we have to go back to the fundamentals. The amount of money that the central bank is spending all over the place, and the MPC people coming out and telling us that, you know, we still go on interest rate, so 23%. Are we selling drugs? Even mafia does not, earn, uh, does not charge 23%. They don't. 23, 27. You don't do that. You don't get. You are, you are getting yourself in a mess. Now, unless we really sit down, bring the interest rate down, get the real sector investment and lending on. You know, I appreciate what you are saying, Honourable Minister of Finance. When you are saying that we left you, we will bring the interest rate down to four percent. Yes, you can be able to do that. But I think let's look at the law. If there is anything in that law, you know, that prevents you from coming down to talk to the central bank. Look at all this extra budgetary money they are spending all over the place. You know, I mean, the central bank, without any prejudice to anybody, is the most unlicensed, uh, wayward institution that this country is, is seeing in the way in which the economy is being managed. 
we have to bring the, interest, the central bank and you on the fiscal side down together to start talking. And I think that is what this Senate needs to do. We made the law that made the central bank independent. We can repeal that law so that we can get them and them coming together without funding the real sector. Budget alone cannot solve this problem. So, are you saying that? So, are you saying that? Are you saying that? Are you telling us that? You know, the central bank is way beyond you and any other kind of interaction to bring uh, to harmonize the way in which you two operate is out of the question. Thank you very much. Senator, wait now. Senator Ashafa. No, they are taking down the questions. It's good that we have to move. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, my, my questions were two, but I'll just limit it to one. Just one, because um, Senator Atai had already asked about SDGs. I listened to the President, too, and I was worried. Now, uh, the, the main one is that, thank you, you realize the fact that um, we have to do something very, very quickly about our infrastructure. And then rail happens to be one major um, area where the president has, um, you know, interest, and Nigerians are looking at what you are doing there. Yes, we've made some right moves, but I need to remind you that it is not enough for us to build rail lines. Yes, we have standard rail lines being constructed now. It is not enough. What are you going to put on those rail lines? And that's what brings me to the inadequate funding in terms of rolling stocks. The coaches and the wagons. The wagons are needed to transport all this, um, the cattle, um, heavy duty um, materials. Good. The coaches are meant for passengers. We are building rail lines we are not providing for coaches and the wagons. I think this is one area that I want you to look at when you are uh, preparing for the 2018 budget. Thank you. And again, I just noticed that I must commend the synergy between the two ministries. I've watched you before doing uh, budget preparations where you will differ to each other. But this time around, I think um, a lot of preparations go went into coming, you know, for this particular meeting. Well done. Senator Mao. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, distinguished senators, uh, honorable ministers, first and foremost, I want to say from the beginning, I asked for the document being read, and I thought I had that it's been circulated, but I'm yet to get any. I had it's been circulated, I'm yet to get any. So I just want to put that on record. I've not gotten any. Well, why that is on? Uh, let me, to a little, uh, to, a large, uh, to some extent, disagree with some of my colleagues. I support us going back to January, December financial year. It is an acceptable uh, program and is um, popular. But looking at the 2017 budget, looking at the level of releases, they are so meager. Just like he has said, well, we, are, we had, we are coming out of the recession. And if we are coming out, this is actually the time for us to inflate the economy by releasing more money. And we have to release more money through a capital uh, project. So, but if you look at what I'm seeing here, and budget is coming in um, October, we expect that by December or so we should pass it, and we're already in the last quarter. So what magic are you going to do? Because if we really want to inflate the economy and I lay the fears of my brother like Gumer. Then we need to release more money. I give you an instant looking at this budget presented. The president had made a commitment as regards health, primary health. We are uh, um, 10,000 uh, primary health centers will be rebuilt. He was ca categorical this year. And I was also at the uh, launch of the revitalization uh, health in uh, somewhere in um, Kuchingoro. But if you look here, primary health care budget is 19 billion, and only 2 billion has been released. Number two, today we are talking about um, uh, um, outbreaks here and there. The Center for Disease Control has been moving all over, borrowing money. But if you look at this budget, I've not seen one cobalt release to Center of Disease Control of Nigeria. Then how do we curtail all these uh, outbreaks here and there, cholera is there, uh, uh, missiles? 
polio and what have you. So please look at this, and I believe that if you can release more money, it will help us. But I want to say the idea of going back January to December financial year is popular and is acceptable. Thank you. Any question? Mine is just lend my voice to my, the last speaker and commend my friends and colleagues from the Federal Minister of Finance, especially the Minister. There's nowhere in the world, whether you're a borrower or a lender, that you have a distorted accounting year that is acceptable. Nowhere. We must do it right. If I'm going to borrow, my accounting year is much. It doesn't matter the backlog. All I will say is that let's put a committee in place, monitor the backlog, and whatever we're carrying over, let's work together. Thank you. Senator Sabi Aliu. Yeah, thank, thank, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think uh, the bulk of the issues I will have raised have been, you know, talked about, but I have one very, you know, serious concern. Uh, I think some few weeks ago, the Ministry of Finance uh, informed civil servants that uh, there is this backlog of areas dating back to 2012 uh, in various MDAs. And I think uh, this issue has been on. Uh, many civil servants keep repeating this issue. They will pay, they will pay, they will pay. And uh, there is no clarity. So I want you to please perhaps uh, shed some light on this so that uh, most of these civil servants can actually have, uh, and I think that was the basis for the Association of Senior Civil Servants of Nigeria wanting to go on strike. Uh, I understand something is being released, but how sufficient and for what period, I think there is confusion. And I think it's very important that you try to, because some people are already borrowing money in anticipation of this and it's creating problems. So the answers you'll be given today I think we go a long way in giving some elixir to many families, interestingly. So I think that, that is a question I want to ask. But permit me to say, lastly, that this issue of our budget year, even though my brother there is saying January to February, I mean to December is popular, but then if one is to use statistics, looking at where we are coming from, We've never been able to get this January to December for so many reasons. So my take is that why not let's work together to look at the natural order that we have one way or the other found ourselves in. I know there are many countries that have March to March as their financial year. What is important is 12 months. That's what is important. South Africa is not January to December. I think it's about April or March, I can't remember, but definitely it's not January to December. And I know so many other countries. The peculiarity of our fund flow, my take is that the peculiarity of our fund flow should guide which month we should begin to count our 12th year. I think if we do this, we'll be facing reality rather than to continuously wanting to rush. Because right now I don't see how we are going to exit the present you know, you're already having the 2016 coming in more than even the March we normally have. Now this one, if we are to do justice to it, surely we also now hit the next month. So I think these are the points I just want to thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Issa Momiso, you have any? Okay, you can answer the questions. Okay, go first. Um, I would like to. I would like. Please. I would like to to, uh, to thank all of you. Order. I would like to thank all of you for the uh, useful comments and commendation as well. We're, we're very grateful. Um, on the issue of uh, oil production, uh, if you recall. Last year, there was a time it went down to almost. Uh, there was a time it went down to almost a million barrels last year. This year, it has actually come up. We've been very successful in having better production in the Niger Delta, and 
right now, I think we're producing at about, about 2 million barrels. So we ha still haven't hit the 2.2, but we have the capacity uh, to do so. So we'll continue to need your support so that we can, because we need the revenues from crude oil to get out of the dependence on crude oil. So we'll still need revenues from crude oil. So um, ask for your support. Uh, with, with regard to the issue of the, the fiscal year, um, as, as, as I indicated, a lot of work had gone actually in, this, in the Senate. And, you know, and we, were, we were asked that, can we do it? And so based on the prompting, of the Senate itself, we have been working flat out to try and achieve it. It's based on the prompting. So, and it is a good, it's good to have it. It is true that the transition period will always be difficult wherever, whenever you decide to do it. But I believe that with discipline and hard work, it can be achieved. With discipline and hard work, and what we should, we should try to work on is, once we achieve it, we should maintain it. It doesn't really matter what your fiscal year is. It can be April to April. It used to be April to April. It doesn't matter what it is. But whatever it is, we should keep to it. So, but where you have some year is February, some year is March, another year is May, another year is June. That is what is causing the problems that we're having. If every year it is April to April, fine. January to this thing, fine. Whatever it is. But in your wisdom, you had indicated January to December, which we agree with. We agree with. Because it follows a natural this thing. And when we discuss with, for instance, uh, the Ministry of, say, Power, Works and Housing, they like it because they can now get a lot done before the rainy season. They can get a lot of things done before the rainy season. But when the budget is passed in April, you're going to, into the rainy season. That is the problem. So that is what, but whichever way it is, we will be working with you. It is budget is, has always to be in consultation with the National Assembly. It is a partnership between the executive and the National Assembly. So we will work with you. you know, if there are issues, we will work with you to resolve the issues. So I would like to appeal to you for your support. We'll work together you know, and resolve whatever issues they are. And if you should decide as a National Assembly that you do not want January to this thing, let us know. You know, and because really at the end of the day, this country is for all of us. And the January to December fiscal year is one which at least the, the private sector, which the, has to spend, everybody likes it. They can predict. I'll tell you something. The, the, uh, we have our uh, economy is over 100 trillion. Federal government spending is only about seven. So who's, the rest and then state government will also spend some money. But the majority, the bulk of that spending for this economy is private sector. And the private sector have to be able to predict, you know, the government budget. We have to do something that can stimulate major private sector spending. And that is the structure of the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan. And so far, with your support, we have been going well. I would like to appeal for you to continue to support us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Distinguished. Um, the observations about uh, level of releases in SDGs in a, a number of sectors, I think those points are well taken. The issue is really that with limited funds you have to prioritise it. I would love to be able to fund every single item on the budget 
up front, but it's, that's not the reality we live in, unfortunately. But we look forward to cooperating with you, uh, getting the uh, international borrowings on the, on the road so that we can quickly adjust those agencies that didn't get and make sure that they're prioritised. And we've told those agencies that you are priority. We simply couldn't uh, cater for everybody. And as the Minister of Budget and Planning has said correctly, we had to prioritise certain sectors that had um, um, seasonality in their spending, largely the Ministry of Power, Works and Housing because of the rains, the Ministry of Agriculture because they had to move in advance of the rains, the Ministry of Defence had to be prioritised because of the challenges, the resurgence that we saw in the, in the North East. So we had to, the, if you look at the bulk of what we spent, and then transport because they had already gone ahead, uh, they're working to a schedule on some of their railway projects and they needed to, to come. So we first did those and then what was left we were able to just um, try and share. Among, I agree it's not ideal, but I think as soon as we are, um, uh, get, get the funds in, of course, we will quickly release. And I think last year we did very well at $1.2 trillion. We tried to be very fair. Most agencies were quite satisfied with what we did, and we're sure we'll do that and probably exceed that uh, this year. Um, then um, the issue on... Um, the need really to enhance the capital spend. I think I've, I, I couldn't agree more. We've got to enhance our capital spend. But as the Minister of Budget and Planning has said, the budget is simply not big enough. We do need the private sector. And with the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, there's a lot of partnering, a lot of initiatives that we're bringing out now around how do we partner with the private sector, how do we mobilise more private sector capital into many of the things that we need to, to do. The point on interest rates, I don't want um, my point to be misconstrued that the central bank is independent. They're independent legally, but there's one economy. And we have to work together. And we are working together. In fact, we met this morning, we flew in this morning, we talk constantly on trying to align um, our objectives. One of the strategies that we have for bringing down interest rates is to reduce the demand for treasury bills. And that brings us back to the issue of refinancing. As you know, we are appealing for approval to refinance about $2 billion worth of treasury bills. When we do that, the demand for... Because what's happening at the moment, as the treasury bills are maturing, we're rolling them over. When we don't roll them over, we begin to reduce the demand for treasury bills and the headline interest rate should begin to come down. Of course, there are other monetary policy instruments that the uh, central bank can use to drive down interest rate, and I'm sure when you interact with the central bank governor, you'll make your... Um, your um, feelings very much known to him. Of course, we are uh, on the fiscal side, but we are aligned. We are working together. It's one Nigeria. We've got to work in the interest of the entire economy. Um, but, I mean, I, as, as the biggest borrower, the federal government, of course, we want interest rates to be lower. And we're working as hard as we can. But our side is really to try and refinance some of the existing domestic borrowings. And also, we have to be very careful of crowding out the private sector. We've got to come out of the market a little bit to allow... Uh, the private sector to come in because that is the stimulus that is needed to create uh, the jobs. Um, the point made on rail I think is well taken and I'm sure the Ministry of Transport will be applying for that rolling stock. Uh, the issue of salary arrears, what's been happening is there's been a 10 billion a month release that started I think four, four months ago and has continued but the majority of the arrears as you know are part of the promissory notes program which again we're coming to the National Assembly it's a long standing problem some people haven't had promotional arrears for years we need uh, and we've been discussing with our various committees on what we will need what we'll be uh, requesting from the National Assembly to finally put a line under this issue of uh, salary arrears because it's just uh, accumulating and it's causing hardship thank you and one, one, one final finance, thing. Yeah, finance. Can I just say one final thing too? Okay. Yes. I just wanted to make another appeal to you. Uh, in terms of, we are, we are anxious, as you, as, as you all gather, as soon as we, as we get money to actually fund the capital budget. We're very, very anxious, just like you are. It would be helpful if you could uh, look at that environment, so, because it will help us. To, to know exactly exactly what we are this thing. So it's just an appeal. It's an appeal. It's okay. Yeah, Honourable uh, Minister, I think that takes me very quickly to my question. Is the fact that the environment or the amendment that is with us, is it affecting the implementation of the 2017 budget? Is it affecting it? Well, in the sense that we don't know 
what the final shape of that aspect you know you know why i say this i say this because yes there is also a possibility that that environment doesn't get dealt with and if it doesn't get dealt with we have a budget that is already a law and it's important that implementation doesn't get affected or determined by that request it's very important that you know, that we that we understand that uh, yes, I, I wanted to say that um, we are bound by the law. There's no, no doubt about it. However, uh, it would help us if you looked at the, at, at the environment. But we're bound by the law. Okay. Thank you. Now, everything looks good. Yeah. The way we've spoken here, everything looks fantastic. No, I, 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 please, I don't want you to leave with that impression. Yeah. They, we have, as we said, we have revenue challenges. We said so. The, we will we need to generate more revenue, and we'd like to work with you. As we said, even the uh, the budget, this has the numbers of the DG budget indicated that we were only 91% of our revenues, which is not bad, but we'd rather have 100% because that helps us. So, so basically, we w we should continue to work together to try and increase our revenues. We'll be getting back to you. We'll be getting back to you on, on that because we, we may require uh, some laws and all that to help us in terms of the, of the revenue. And also uh, some of the, the, uh, the budgets of the agencies for you to also help us there. So, but basically, we'd like to work together to enhance the revenue uh, picture in the district because with more revenues, we then will have, we'll borrow less because really we don't want to continue this. We would like to reduce the level of borrowing and have and rely more on revenues. So that is the message I would like you to. It's not as if everything we have, we still have revenue issues. Uh, thank okay, you. Um, thank you. Just two quick things. What we have here is actually the implementation, the performance on capital. I think we would like that we get furnished with detailed information about the proper performance of revenue for 2017. It's very important. Very important because borrowing 2.3 trillion can only help us only to the extent that we're able to realize the over 5 trillion of federal government expected revenue for 2017. And if you look at one of the revenue streams, independent revenue of government for 2016, the projection was of 1.5 trillion. What came in wasn't up to 300 billion. In 2017, the projection is 800 billion. We're interested in, this, in knowing how much really has come in so far. Is that important, please? Um, you see, people are worried. The way you release your money selectively. If this thing goes like this, it is very clear that some project will just die off. <coughs> and this project are dear to many people. So I want you to bear in mind that since this budget was as a result of your submission to us, if you feel certain items in the budget are not supposed to be there in that budget, in 2018 budget, don't bring them. But it's not good to put something in the budget, raise people's hope, only for it to end up not being implemented. So I want to add you, I know that you have revenue challenges, but from the submission of the DG budget, 91% as of June, oil price has been up has been above the benchmark. For the peace in Niger Delta, production is not very low. The chairman, That's President Inland Fire, FRS said he is, he is collecting beyond the project, project target. Customs are also claiming the same thing. So I think we, are, we end up getting more than 100%. So that being Minister of Finance to bear in mind that in releasing, your, releasing money you should look at almost all those things that are in the budget. Otherwise some will just pack up. Secondly the, the commitment of the Minister of Budget and National Planning to this January to December is very 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 high. We agree with you as a member of the committee. There's nothing wrong with that. But that do, in doing that, we should not sacrifice half of the budget. 
I think we want to challenge you to come up with a formula whereby in arriving at January, December, we will, we will not end up um, scrubbing or destroying or removing half of the budget. Because like Senator Gomez said, we are all politicians. Next year, 2018 budget, yes, it's 2018. But there will be a lot of political activity. There will be a lot of political activities to the extent that people will not be able to buy what we tell them is in the budget. People will have to hear what we have done, not what we promised them. And therefore, it is very dangerous to kill this 2017 budget because you want to bring the financial year from January to December. So I want to challenge you to tell us how we can at least save not less than 75 percent of the budget. Otherwise, this January, December may not be feasible again. I want to ask two questions, two or three questions. From, 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 our, from the discussion from the beginning to the end, the Minister of Finance has been dodging and trying to tell us when is the next release coming. Not, not, not the 100 billion going to Ministry of Works. The other agencies are anxious to know when they will get the release. So when will the release be coming? We need, we need specific date or time frame. Number, Number two, there are things that are going on in the papers. I read them. I don't understand them. Something like Bitcoin. I don't know what is Bitcoin. Bit, is it Bitcoin? Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Something like that. And they're trying to get money from people. I hope it's, it's, it, the thing has got the blessing of the central bank or the government. And then Cripsy... Because of the rate of unemployment, this MM um, Ponzi scheme that got destroyed, they have reinvented another one called Bitcoin. And they are sending with this, um, um, what do you call it, social media, telling people that Central Bank has had meetings and encouraging. And I said it's not fault, because the growth rate defies any economic standard. That if you had $100 in, 200, in 210, it can even get you $17 million, which is not true. So my advice is that, please, there might be a need for Minister of Finance and Central Bank to educate Nigerians. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, educated people, yeah. retired people, have, they've told them that that other one was a bad one, yeah, that you have a future. Bill Gates is inside. Uh, Warren Boven is inside. Wherever they're getting those fictitious, they say, honestly, it's a reality. Very educated people are inside. So please, I think you need to help us. The date of the next release, very, very important to Nigerians. And also and this much? issue on, and how much? And how, much? How, much? how much is projected? Minister, Minister of Finance. Uh, distinguished Senator, um, I will have to get back to you because as I explained earlier on, I'm waiting for a resolution from the National Assembly. Once I get that resolution, I can go and raise the money. So I, I would rather throw the question back to you. Can I get my resolution? Telling us that you have exhausted the domestic... Uh, I've, I've said that according part. to our plan for the year, we cannot overload the domestic market. We'll how much have you borrowed? We haven't told I, us how much... You, no, I told, you, I told you I would give you those figures. Domestically. I don't have those figures. Because you have about 1.2 trillion to borrow domestically. I told you, sir, that I will give you those figures. How much have you borrowed? So that that's the only way we can know whether you are over borrowing but or sir, not with, borrowing. But, sir, with the greatest of respect, with the greatest of respect, I think it's unfair for you to expect us to be able to do the expenditure side of the budget when we don't have certain on the revenue side. So if you give us the resolution, we can look at market conditions. We were very fortunate. We managed it very well last year. We yeah. came into the market at the right time. Right now, we can't move in the market. Other countries want to move. Give us, you, you have, give us, what is it? give us what we need. We give you what is needed. The main one we have. And, and, and distinguished. Right, Minister, distinguished. Uh, to... Distinguished. Let me answer your question now, sir. Let Nigerians know that you don't have any serial request before except the railway one. No, we have many, sir. Which one do you have? What, we have one, many, sir. Which one do you I have, have? I have components of the borrowing plan still unapproved. Which one? Sir, you know. We spent a lot of time together dragging this thing back and forth. <laughs> sir, you know. He knows, sir. We know. Do you know, We have, we have, we have, we have, we have um, aspects of the borrowing plan up till now 
unapproved. And you know what you and I had to go through to get even the Chinese loan for the railway approved. Everything is being delayed. So I want to appeal to you. Please help us. Please help us. Please help oh, us. Look, Chairman Finance is around. Me Please. and Chairman Finance. Thank you. I don't know. But I don't know. I don't know. Yes. I don't know. I don't know anything. I don't know. It's with. Yes, it's with. Um, some is with um, foreign. Give us a small date. Okay, we'll give you. Well, as soon as you give me resolution. I can get into the market. Why do you say that there will be no release until we until you borrow? No, I'm not saying so. Say, I'm uh -huh. saying I'm <laughs> saying that I, you're asking me to give you a figure and a date, and I can't do that until I have certainty around when you will give me that resolution, and then I can immediately begin. To, I can even bridge once I know I have that resolution. But what would be useful, sirs, going forward is once we have the budget and it has the borrowing plan, I think you should just approve it and give us the resolutions because that gives us flexibility in the market. Yes, sir. I understand this. Um, I think this question will never be exhausted. Yes. We had a very, very good session, very interesting session, very frank discussions. And I think Nigerians have been, Nigerians have been well educated on the progress so far achieved in the implementation of the 2017 budget. I think on behalf of my colleagues, because this thing will never end. I would like to plead with my colleagues. I want to plead with my colleagues to kindly allow me to close yes. this session yes. and thank the honorable ministers for the, this thing will never finish yes. we will we'll have other rounds of this kind of session yes. very interesting yes. it looks like we have to do this in maybe quarterly yes. maybe quarterly we have to do this, something like that so on this on this note i want to thank my colleagues for taking a long time and devoting this time to handling this issue very well and i want to thank the two ministers the Minister of State, the DG Budget, the liaison officer, our friend, who is on both sides of the divide, and all the supporting staff, members of the press, members of the public, ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you very much. And on this call, I want to declare this session closed. Sine die. Well, I think it's a... Well, I think it's a fair comment that the ministers acquitted themselves relatively well before the senators. And in summary, the Minister of Budget and National Planning, Udoma Udo Udoma, clarified that 1.2 trillion naira of the 2016 budget still in operation between January and June was released for capital projects. And this was a major factor in Nigeria exiting the recession. For 2017 budget, Releases for capital will reach 440.9 billion by the end of the week. Minister of Finance Kemi Adeoshun is pleased that revenue is better compared to the second quarter of last year. Net oil receipts are up by 30.7%, while non-oil revenues are more encouraging, up 22.55%. They call on support from the Senate on fine-tuning legislation on borrowing and presidential approval on MDA's budgets. Senators, however, want clarification on overhead and recurrent expenditures.